if you're from or if you currently live in Eurasia, you might actually be relatively familiar with this guy, but for those in the West like me, not as much. Because this is a man hailing all the way from Chechnya, and he goes by the name of Kusain Askabov. And not only did he get fraud checked in the UFC, he's also had one of the worst falls from grace imaginable. Let me explain. Kusain started his professional MMA career on March 4th, 2012, where he got a unanimous decision win over Vladimir Vyasov in the regional promotion Legion fight. And right off the bat, the most suspicious thing about this guy is that his first 13 wins are against people that hardly even fight or have hardly even fought before. Now, given, I'd say that's appropriate for the first five or six bouts of his career, but 10 and onward is just a bit off. But regardless, in his sophomore appearance in WWFC, he picked up the competition by beating Benjamin Brander, who at the time was 7-1 by unanimous decision. And he continued fighting for promotions like WWFC and WFCA until he amassed an astounding 23-0 record. And he was already six away from the all-time record. Now, given his record was relatively padded, but nonetheless, that's still impressive. And oh yeah, did I mention at this time he was only 25 years old? And given the fact that he had a 20 23 and 0 record at such a young age, as well as the Eurasian MMA fan base being so passionate, he amassed a total following on Instagram of 5.2 million, which is otherworldly for a regional MMA prospect. So, with all this talk of a superstar 23 and 0 prospect in the regional scene, the UFC wanted a piece of that pie. So, they initially signed him for a fight on Dana White's contender series against Joe Anderson Brito, and everything was looking fantastic for Kusain Askabov. Until Sorry, I had to steal that from Ray William Johnson there. But Kusain Askabov had to pull out due to visa issues. And yeah, that definitely sucked. But after his visa issues were resolved, the UFC were just straight up like, you know what, fuck the Contender Series, we're going to immediately give you a fight in the UFC against Gilbert Burns' brother, Herbert Burns. And this fight was going to take place at UFC on ABC3 on July 16th, 2022. Until... Hussein Askabov didn't have to pull out due to visa issues this time, but to an injury. And at this point in time, it had already been two years since Hussein Askabov has been in the ring. But Hussein Askabov was not going to give up just yet. Because, I mean, third time's the charm right? On February 18th, 2023, he was booked against a UFC fighter by the name of Jamal Emers, who at the time was 1-2 and two and was coming off of a really bad knee injury against Pat Sabatini. And this was looking like a great matchup for Kusain Askabov for his first fight in the UFC. Until, no, I'm kidding. It happened, but wouldn't that be funny? So yes, this fight took place in the apex. It happened as scheduled. They made their walkouts and they got into the ring. So, what happened next? How was Kusain Askabov going to do in his UFC debut? Well, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards, and all three see it the same. 30-27, your winner by unanimous decision, Jamal Pretty Boy Emmers! Boom. Just like that, he was out-wrestled, he was out-struck, he was out-everything, pretty much, against Jamal Emmers. Jamal Emmers proved to be levels above Kusain Askabov, which speaks volumes given the fact that Jamal Emmers has proven to be good time and time again, but is still also at journeyman status. This was a huge loss for Kusain Askabov, and his only one at that. Losing a straight 30-27 to 27 decision against a previously 1-2 fighter in the UFC, especially if you're as high profile as a 23-0 fighter, that's just not a good look. So he had to do something, and he had to do something quick. Quick. So four months later, he was booked in a bout against David Onama, and again, he pulls out. And I can't actually find the exact reason as to why he did, but if you guys in the comments are able to find that out, please let me know. And then again, he was booked against Joe Anderson Brito, and again, he pulled out, this time due to injury. And I mean, just like last time, third time's the charm, right? And this time, he was booked against Daniel Pineda. And I mean, come on, this time, nothing can go wrong, right? Oh. Nope, never mind. It did. Wait, what the fuck even happened? Oh my god. Wow. Uh, so yes, given his arrest, he was not only imprisoned, but also he was imprisoned in a foreign country that is Thailand. So this was not good for Kusain Askabov. But fortunately, after a large amount of review and investigation, he was found not guilty of these charges along with his brother. So he was set free and now he could fight again. Oh. Never mind. He then fails a fucking drug test. <clears throat> A really bad one at that. 
he was suspended for two years. So the UFC has had enough of him, and he's officially been released from the UFC roster and is suspended for two years on top of that. So for the most part, he cannot fight in any promotion until 2026, making it pretty much impossible for this guy to come back. But I don't know, what do you guys think? Two years from now, he's going to be 31, which for most people is the prime of their career. So I don't know, if he's able to make an amazing comeback, I would be genuinely fascinated. But given how much time and ring rust he's probably gotten over the years, I don't think that's gonna happen. But seriously, what do you guys think though? Was this the biggest fraud check in UFC history? Of course, by the numbers, I believe it is, but maybe there's a bigger instance that I'm missing. With that said, Thank you so much for watching. This is On The Liver MMA. I just knocked over my cup. Signing out.